Good morning. Matt here for another daily shave video. And for today's daily shave, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. And I'm not going to enjoy today's shave because today I'm going to be using a cartridge razor. So this is the Gillette Fusion 5 Pro Glide. So my friend Abe over at West Coast Shaving asked me and the other daily shavers if we do a comparison video. So a side-by-side -side shave between a modern cartridge razor using uh, the typical canned goo gel, shaving gel on one side and then using a DE razor with a uh, real shaving soap and a brush on the other side. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, Abe knows uh, how painful this is for me. He, uh, I think he takes pleasure in that. But out of my love for Abe, I'm gonna take one for the team and attempt for the first time in about 19 years to use a cartridge razor. Um, the only thing that's more painful than using a cartridge razor was actually the experience of going and having to buy them and it kind of brought back all these memories when I went into the Walgreens and picked up uh, this razor and this shaving gel. Um, and it kind of reminded me of why, you know, part of the reason why I, you know, put down those carts and picked up a straight razor all those years ago. Um, and got into traditional wet shaving. I mean, first of all, you know you're in the wrong place when all the razors and blades are behind a plexiglass window like Fort Knox under a lock and key uh, because the blades are so expensive. <laughs> so people will steal them because they don't wanna play. So for the replacement blades, so the replacement blades for this razor, so first of all, this razor, it cost, I have the receipt right here. Uh, fifteen forty nine for the razor. It came with two cartridges, so you know that's actually pretty good. You know, it seems like oh, it's not that much, um, but I feel like that's how they hook you in. You know, it's like oh, you, the initial outlay it's not that much, but when you go buy the blades, the replacement blades, these particular ones twenty one ninety nine at my store. Now I know I do live in New York City, so everything's a little bit more expensive here, or a lot more expensive, but still, $21.99. And that wasn't even the cheapest one. There were some other ones that had these gimmicks on them. There was one with like a gel strip, and another one, a Pro Guard, I think it was called, $25.99 for four cartridges. $25.99 for four cartridges. Um, they made a claim on the packaging that said that each blade will last a month, and uh, I'm a little bit, or let's say more than a little bit skeptical, skeptical about that claim. I'm just gonna leave all the flubs in this video. I really don't want to uh, do this over. <laughs> uh, as I said, I'm not gonna enjoy the shave. Um, yeah, so you can use a cartridge razor. You can use any blade for a month or more, uh, but you're not gonna get good shaves out of it. Um, you know, and I think that's part of the reason why people get such loud, you know, why, or at least for me, I got such lousy shaves out of cartridge razors, is you put, you know, because they're so expensive, you want to push that blade as long as possible. You just keep using it and using it and, you know, you're using dull razor. So, uh, so I'm really glad that I won't ever have to purchase a cartridge ever again after this video. And I'm ready to put this behind me. He also wanted us, Abe, he also wanted us to have a little more growth because he wanted to really test it out uh, and see the difference in performance between the DE and the cartridge. And uh, so this is more growth than I probably had in a year or longer. Um, you know, I, I shave every day. This is two days without shaving. I like to shave every day. It's really starting to itch. So I am actually anxious to get this stubble off my face. Um, so now let me, uh, let me start going through the equipment. So, uh, okay, so why don't we start with the Fusion Pro Glide. Um, so the one that I was used to, so they didn't have this when I was using them. They had the Mach 3 was the one, I think the last one that I used, but I also used to use the uh, Atras or the, maybe they're the, uh, it's like basically with two blades, the two blade one, and then they came out with the Mach 3, I remember. 
Um, but they did change, there are some new features on this one. So um, for one, it has this gel strip, or actually I don't want to say the wrong name. So this is, all right, this is the package that it came in. I cut it open here with the scissor. It has this hard plastic on the back. The package is actually pretty glossy. It looks really good. Um, they need something to convince you to, uh, to buy these. Uh, so it has a flex ball. So this allows it to pivot. So um, there is a pivot. So it pivots back and forth. And the um, track two razors or after razors, they did that as well. But so now it has this kind of side to side motion, which to me is like kind of a little bit of a red flag. And when you are learning how to shave, you usually don't want your razor to go side to side unless you really want to give yourself a nasty cut. So I don't really see the utility of having a spring that will bring the razor back sideways, back and forth. It seems like a bad idea to me, but I don't know. I'll, I'll try to keep an open mind. No, I won't. Um, the other feature, so it has, there's like a rubbery kind of guard here. The whole thing is made out of, um, it's like, it's pretty grippy. It's light, uh, it's plastic, and I don't know if this is metal or pop metal that's been chromed. Um, it is, yeah, it's comfortable razor. Um, these pieces, the, the card itself is mostly plastic. There's some metal pieces on it too. Um, so there's a flexi ball. There's this lubricating strip called the, wait, I don't want, oh, enhanced lubra strip, enhanced lubra strip. It's not just a lubra strip, it's enhanced. What I don't understand about this is, wouldn't you want lubrication in front of the blades uh, as it's cutting on your face? So like it's trailing the blade, so it's like after it's already cut, then it puts lubrication on your face. I don't really understand that. Um, you know, unless maybe you go over that same area a bunch of times, now it has some lubrication on it. I don't know. But again, it's kind of a weird design to me for some reason. I don't know why you would have a lubricating strip that trails the blade like after it cut. It's like putting the cart before the horse. I don't, I don't get it. Um, but it does have this flexible head. So this kind of is designed to take the, um, you know, take the technique out of using the razor. So it makes, so you can just press it to your face and it'll go around these curves um, because it has this kind of spring and it's on this pivot, um, which, you know, that does take out some of the technique. With a DE razor, you do have to actually change the angle of the blade by using your hand. I know, oh, the horror, right? So uh, so this does definitely dumb down your shave experience for you. Uh, you know, if it's too much to move the blade yourself with your hand. Um, so, okay, so this is, oh, and of course there's five blades, five blades. So that's a step up in technology from when I was shaving with three blades because five blades gives you a better shave than three blades. You follow that logic. And it also has, I will say this is a nice feature that it has. Um, it does have a trimmer here uh, that allows you to maybe get a little tighter area. So one of the main problems I remember, there are a lot of problems with shaving the cartridge um, that I didn't like about it. So one of them is because it's this kind of, um, all these blades stacked up on this plane, uh, it's a bit bulky and it's hard to get like under the crease of your nose and the crease of your chin and kind of like it's hard to find where the sideburns are to trim them. So it does have another blade. So there's actually five blades plus a sixth blade here on the other side, you flip it over um, and you can use it as a trimmer. So we'll see how that works. I, I don't really like it because it's very um, low profile, that blade, I cannot, can't really tell like what angle that blade is. So we'll see how that goes when we get to it. Um, so there is the Fusion 5 Pro Glide by Gillette. Uh, let's see, 
let's compare it to the Merkur Progress. So this is a, um, a modern DE Razor. So this, I don't know how long the model's been out. Um, they've been making these adjustable razors for a while. It, uh, it's adjustable, so it basically has this very comfortable head that's similar to the uh, Mercor 34C HD, which is um, kind of like a basic razor that a lot of people start out with. It's, uh, to me, a bit too mild, but the head design is very, very comfortable. Um, so this kind of gives the best of both worlds because you can uh, adjust the aggression on it. So um, it has five settings. You just turn the... You turn this little knob on the bottom, you turn it right to tighten it down to uh, lower the gap. And uh, I'm gonna start out on, let's see, define the dot. I'm gonna start out on a four, a four out of five. So this one, so this razor is also, I mean, it is definitely a little bit more expensive. So because it is adjustable, this starts at around 70 to $80 is the range you find this razor. Um, the short handle one is a little cheaper, I think. Um, but if you don't want the adjustable there, that Merker, the 34C is around $40. Um, so the initial cost of the razor itself, yes, it is more, but this thing is built to last. It's made out of metal. Um, you know, if you take good care of it, you can pass it down. It'll still work. Uh, in years, decades, um, and the blades are so much cheaper. So that's really where the savings, you get the savings is when you buy the replacement blades. So those, uh, you know, $10 for a hundred blades, you know, it's basically five cents a blade versus, you know, $5 for one cartridge, you know, a hundred times more than a single DE blade. So, um, Let's see, let's talk about the soap or the gel, the blue goo. Okay, so this is the Edge Gel. So at $2.50, it's actually not, uh, not so expensive. It won't, you know, it's 2.75 ounces. So it's a decent amount. Um, you know, in this one, I don't know how fast you go through this. I don't really remember, um, but it's not, it's not so expensive. Um, let me go through, oh, one thing that catches my eye from this Caution, container may explode. So watch out. <laughs> so you don't want to get it near any open flame or anything like that. Uh, it's under pressure and it has some flammable, combustible material in here. Uh, so you want to watch out for that. The ingredients, so uh, water, palmitic acid is fat, uh, triethanol amine, um, sunflower seed oil, glyceride, isopentane, sorbitol, Steric acid, isobutane. Okay, so these are some of the flammable materials. So some of these, these are basically um, hydro or uh, you know petrochemicals that they're putting in here that have different you know for different reasons. Some of them are propellants. Um, some of them uh, might be for moisture, for slickness. There's a sorbitol. Let's see, steric acid, which is just a fat. Isobutane. PVP, uh, which is an abbreviation for another uh, chemical that uh, I can't pronounce. Uh, fragrance, PEG90M, which is polyethylene glycol, um, aloe, and blue number one, which is a dye and turns the goo blue. Um, so it really doesn't have some things that are very, you really necessarily want to put on your skin, even though it says it's for sensitive skin, um, with the addition of aloe down at the bottom of the ingredient list. Um, you know, it has a lot of chemicals. Uh, the scent on it is, uh, it's, it's not bad. It's actually, it's kind of fresh smelling. It kind of has a shower gel smell to it, or maybe like deodorant. Um, you know, it's, it's mass appealing, I think. So that's the gel on the other side. So I talked about the progress. The soap I'm going to be using is the Artisan Soap Shop. So this is Triumph by the Artisan Soap Shop. This is their tallow formula. So this is Artisan Made by Jenny Peck out of uh, Springfield, Missouri. Um, 
It's six ounces of soap, which is a lot. It's about 50% more than most of these tub soaps that you get. Um, and it represents one of the best deals in wet shaving, in my opinion. It's about $12 for this tub. This will last about a year, uh, maybe a little less, depending on how much soap you like to use. Um, it's a towel-based soap. It's a very good quality soap. Uh, offers a lot of protection slickness. It has a great fatty feel on the face. Um, I also reviewed their vegan formula. I have the lime mint. I really like that scent and the actual the soap base she uses is very nice. Just to, for comparison's sake, let's look at what ingredients uh, Jenny Peck likes to use and the Artisan Soap Shop soap. So we've got stearic acid, which is a fat. So all soap is made from fat and a base. Um, beef tallow, another type of fat. Coconut oil, another fat. And then potassium hydroxide, that's the base. So every soap uses, uh, it used to be lye, which has a strong base in it. And um, this is basically that base. Glycerin, which is a byproduct of making uh, soap, which is basically um, a part of the fat molecule uh, fragrance. And sodium hydroxide, another form of that base. Castor oil, another fat and sodium lactate, which is added at the end of the soap making process to uh, allow it to be poured uh, into a tub. It also kind of is a humectant. It brings moisture to your face. So in this case, you have um, a real so uh, shaving soap that is basically made up of fat and a base, which turns it into acid and fragrance. Um, there's no propellants in here, no dyes in here, um, no petrochemicals, and it's not pretty sure it's not gonna explode and or catch on fire. So I've already scooped out some of that into my scuttle. And with that, okay, the brush, at last but not least, is my Wetsco Shaving um, Ancient Stone Collection Synthetic Brush. It's a 25 millimeter knot. Um, it's a very soft uh, black fan type knot. Uh, out of all the tuxedo type knots that I've tried, this one is definitely the softest um, and a little bit uh, less backbone, you know, which I prefer. Great little brush. I'm gonna wet the face and get started. I don't have a lot of room here because I have a lot more equipment. So I'm gonna wet my brush and just start loading the soap. I think I'm gonna do the soap uh, side first because I really don't wanna have that gel on my face any longer than I have to. Abe, I love you. Otherwise, I would never do this. We have to think of something to get him back. He's gonna have to, maybe I'll tag him. It'll be like a tag video that has to use a cartridge razor. Suffer like I'm suffering. Okay, so I think I'm loaded here. And I think I'll just do the right side of my face with the soap. I didn't mention the scent. So the scent strength is about a six out of 10. And this is a um, Creed Aventus uh, dupe scent. So Creed Aventus, it's like a niche, uh, niche fragrance. Very popular men's, men's cologne. Okay, nice and pasty. I'm gonna start adding some water. So just drip some into the brush and paint it in. So the scent of Aventus, it's kind of a uh, fresh, woody, uh, fruity kind of a scent. So it has, uh, I think, cedar and birch and ambergris 
and it has um, pineapple, like a pineapple top note and black currant. Some of the, I know some of the batches of Aventus. I don't have Aventus. It's very expensive. Um, some batches are more, uh, you get more of the birch, like a smoky uh, scent to it, from what I understand. And then some are more fruity. This one definitely, to me, smells a bit fruity. And the pineapple is pretty prominent. It's a nice scent. I'm gonna paint a little more water. Okay, a little more water. To me, there's really no comparison between a product like this that's made by an artisan who uh, is part of the community of wet shavers, who uh, you know takes feedback from wet shavers and really cares about their experience shaving and what they're looking for in a shaving soap, the slickness and the protection, versus using something that looks like it's some dyed goo out of a can. Okay, this is looking good. It's peaky, easy to lather. It has a really nice fatty, full feeling on your face. I'm just gonna go like that. Got some in my mouth. All right, now for the gel side. Okay, out it comes. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, yeah, it's more of that kind of like deodorant or shower gel kind of smell to it. So just gonna rub it in like you would normally do if you actually use this stuff on the regular. Okay, I, I mean, I can tell just from feeling it there's really no comparison in the feeling of the gel to the soap. The soap, I have this really nice moisturized kind of full fatty feeling on my face. And this feels kind of airy. And the smell is kind of just kind of synthetic smelling. Not very nice. And you know, it's just kind of like okay. All right, I guess that's good. So I think first I'm gonna try out the Fusion, what is it called again? The Fusion 5 Pro Glide. All right, here we go. All right, it's not that bad. Although, okay, I am a little surprised. I'm surprised how actually not smooth it feels. It feels kind of draggy, which I wasn't expecting. I thought that these, I thought it would be a little bit smoother. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear it kind of dragging. I think it's having trouble maybe with the two days of growth. And I did find that when I use these, oh, I'm already clogged. I'm already clogged. Yeah, and this is what I remember from these cartridges because these blades are very close together, that if you have any kind of stubble, they clog up really easily. Yeah, it's a little bit, it doesn't feel nice. I'm actually surprised that it doesn't feel smoother. And 
plug. Now I really want to be careful about this area here. I don't want to go against the grain with it. So the main issue with carts for me was I would get a lot of irritation, especially on the neck in this area where the hair grows up. So if you just shave down on your neck, you end up going against the grain. Going against the grain with a cart is really where it, uh, where it starts to break down. And it's because of the design, the blades are locked into that plane at a certain angle. So you can't adjust the angle of the blade when you go against the grain. So uh, if you're using a straight razor, using a DE razor, you can adjust that angle by making it more shallow and that will actually make it more comfortable when you go against the grain. If you're too steep, what ends up happening is it can tend to pull the hairs out kind of at the root and cause it to grow back with a bunch of ingrown hairs. You're shaving like too close under the skin. So I'm going to do a couple passes. I'm not going to do, I mean, I remember when I shaved, you know, I'm kind of surprised that it's not getting, doing a better job under the jaw here. I feel like leaving a lot of stubble behind, it's not getting particularly close. Oh, I have to get this over here. Let's see. Hey, that doesn't feel good. Wow. I'm really surprised how bad it feels. It's very draggy. The Lubra strip, the enhanced Lubra strip. It doesn't seem to be working. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it didn't really get in there. And then of course up here, it's not getting. I'm gonna try with the little trimmer I'm a little bit afraid of. Let's see. Okay, that actually worked pretty well. That's a little bit better than, um, I think that is an improvement, that little trimmer over the Mach 3 that didn't have one. Okay, I'm gonna use the other side of my face now. So I got the Merker Progress. Uh, opened up to a four. And as you can see that that uh, shaving cream or the shaving soap, the artisan soap shop side, it has nice persistence. It doesn't dissipate on you even though it's been sitting there a little while. Okay, and it's pretty aggressive now that I've opened it up, but it still feels nice and uh, it feels mild feels comfortable. That head design is really good. No clogging, you just rinse it. Okay. Handling that growth pretty well. I definitely don't have the same kind of resistance on this side that I had with the Mach 3, I want to call it the Mach 3, but it's the Fusion 5, the Fusion 5. Okay guys, sorry for the cut, but I ran out of juice on the phone, so I had to pause the shave. It's gonna take me a little bit longer than I would have liked. So I am going to do a second pass here. Here we go with the gel again, because I really didn't get very close, um, I have to say, putting on the left side of my face. And that first pass did not get close enough. Put some more gel on. Okay, that seems like I got maybe too much. So,
nice creamy lather on the side. Maybe add a little bit of water to it to refresh it a bit. So again, with the Fusion 5, the Fusion Pro Glide 5. So I'm gonna try to go kind of against the grain here on the neck. And see if I can get a little closer onto the jawline here. It really doesn't feel good. It really surprises me. I don't remember it feeling this draggy when I used the Mach 3, but it has been a long time. Ooh, that doesn't feel good. It's also this gel isn't necessarily working the best. It's almost like it's, the blades are barely getting through. Okay, now it's feeling a little better. Now this is unpleasant. This is where my toughest hairs are. Wow. I'm actually really surprised how it does not feel smooth. Okay, this, this is not gonna work. I can't go against the grain. I try to go across. Yeah, that doesn't feel right. Kind of draggy feeling. I'm gonna use the trimmer. Again. Yeah, there's a lot of stubble here especially in this area, in the hollow, under the jawline. All right, for my second pass, I'm gonna dial it down to a, having trouble seeing the numbers there. I'm gonna put it on like a two and a half for my cross the grain pass. This feels very smooth. Okay. <clears throat> now this video has gone on pretty long, so I think I'm gonna stop it there after two passes. But basically after two passes, it's still, it's a lot closer on this side under the jawline. Here I have a lot of stubble. It's not looking good. It didn't feel good. It was actually worse than I thought it was gonna be. Stubble here under my chin on this side. Here it's pretty clean. Um, I think I'll 
finish my third pass just with my BE razor here uh, to clean everything up. Um, yeah, so my overall sentiments on this razor, uh, I think I, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty sure I won't be using this again, at least for another 20 years. And I think I'll be very happy to not use it. Um, Abe, thanks for, uh, recruiting me for this video. Uh, I hope that you do one soon, and I'd like to uh, see you suffer through a shave like that. Um, and let me know, guys, am I too harsh on cartridge razors here? Uh, do you enjoy using cartridge razor? And uh, if you do, uh, put it in the comments. Uh, let me know which cartridge, which type you like to use, why you like to use it, um, and let's get a conversation going. Um, Abe, I got the receipt right here. All right, I know you have my address, so I'll be expecting that reimbursement check. I'm not joking. I uh, hope you enjoyed the shave, and I'll catch you guys again soon.